Jesus told us that the reason that he taught in parables was so that those who were children of the kingdom would be able to receive it and then the folks of the world who thought they were smart it would be blinded from them. So it was a, it was a secret code, it was, it was a divine language to be able to allow spiritually discerning people to be able to hear truth from God and yet other folks who didn't have relationship from God, it would be a puzzle to them. They wouldn't understand it so that God could give the riches of the eternal kingdom into the hearts of his children where the children of the world would not be able to understand them. So it was God speaking in code. Well, we say generally that a parable is, a, is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. He has a way of divinely explaining some things by giving us some kind of an analogy. And here it, it talks about it. Notice in verse 15, it, it says that when the seed is sown, Satan comes immediately. Verse 15 there, Satan comes immediately when the seed is sown. Now, if the devil does not show up until the seed is sown, then it must not be about you. There must be something special about the seed that God sows into you. That's what he's after. He's after seed. He's after the seed. It's, it's the seed that makes the difference. It is the seed that determines the harvest. And so he's coming after the seed. He's not coming after you directly. If you don't have anything, the devil will never come after you. If the devil is riding you, it's because he recognizes the value of seed that is in you that you may not even reckon, recognize. But there is valuable seed in you. He doesn't come to your doorstep. He doesn't start working with your mind until there's a seed there. He's going to come to a mind that's got a seed of an idea. He's going to come to a heart that has been sown with fertile seeds from God. He's coming after the seed. He's coming after your seed. He's coming after your seed. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25 and 26, it, it mentions there that, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water, and he shall take sickness away from the midst of you, and there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in the land. God says, you know, I, I'm going to protect your seed. That when I put a seed in you, you're not going to miscarry it. I'm going to protect the seed because he's coming after your seed. He wants the seed. He wants your seed. As I've traveled in various places around the world, I'm absolutely astounded at the infant mortality rate. Oftentimes, if you can get a child and make it to two years old, they can make it. But the greatest time that they are vulnerable to death overtaking them is two years old and under. It's when disease takes over and gets them. He wants to get them while they're in, in that seed form because he's coming after the seed. He left Adam and Eve alone so he could go after Cain because he wanted Abel. And notice he went to the good seed. And that's the one that he killed was the good one, Abel. And when you really think of it, remember Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve. Here, here, here they are. He goes after their seed, Adam. The name Adam means mankind. Eve is mother of all living things. And they get together and they, 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 they know one another and they conceive something and give birth to seed. And, and their first seed is, is called Cain. And the second one is Abel. These are nicknames. Here's the full name, Cain. And ability, 